Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Azure Infrastructure Update. It is the 7th of February 2021. Uh, quiet week, but a few actually really cool things that are now available, so I want to kind of dive into those. Uh, as always, if this is useful, a like, subscribe, comment and share would be appreciated. A uh, big milestone uh, for me this week, I hit 40,000 subscribers, so uh, a big thank you for that. Uh, new videos this week. I did a fairly deep dive on looking at Azure on-premises, really what that means, think about Azure Arc and Azure, the stack offerings, Hub, Edge, HCI, really how they all fit together. And then just doing a deep dive on Azure Storage Account and Managed Disk Encryption offerings, both kind of for the Azure Disk at the disk level, but also what I can do with things like Azure Disk Encryption actually within the Linux or Windows operating system. On the compute side, nothing this week. On the network side, nothing this week. On the storage side, actually a couple of features. So MySQL flexible offering, remember, so the Azure Managed Database offerings now have these new flexible offerings and they give you different capabilities around the types of SKU used. They have stop start capability as well. For the MySQL flexible offering, it's now possible to provision additional IOPS. So you get a certain amount of IOPS based on the actual compute SKU you use. I can actually now go above that. So I can provision additional IOPS. It's up to 20,000 IOPS I can go for some of the bigger SKUs. Also, the regular non-flexible version of Azure Database for MySQL is actually adding that stop-start capability. So when I stop it, I stop paying for the compute portion of the cost. Obviously, I still pay for the storage. I don't want to lose my storage. That's my state. I need to keep that. But I stop paying for the compute costs. I can then start it again, and it will just pick up right where it was. This might be super useful for test dev environments, maybe even production, if you only need it for certain times. Then append blob support. So this has now been added for the Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2. So if we think about ordinarily, the Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2 only supported regular block blob. Uh, I couldn't just go and append to the end. So now with this append blob support, I can use that. It might be useful for logging scenarios, and I can still use the regular APIs to actually just go and read from that. So this is kind of a, a nice new capability for the data lake. And then a whole bunch of miscellaneous features. Now, this is my kind of what I'm excited about. Azure AD Cloud Sync has now gone GA. Now, I'm going to do a deep dive on this. I'll post it on Tuesday. But essentially what this is, it can be a replacement for Azure AD Connect. So if we think about ordinarily, we kind of have our Active Directory uh, domain or forest, and then we have kind of our Azure AD. Well, today what we run is Azure AD Connect. So this is a fairly heavy component that I have to run. It kind of has these different connector spaces, a metaverse. If it was a really big environment, I might have to maintain kind of a SQL Server environment, but the engine runs locally. And I can only have one of these talking to an Azure AD instance, which means if I have multiple forests like mergers and acquisitions, they have to have a line of sight. I can't support a disconnected scenario. So this new capability, this new Azure AD Cloud Sync, well now with Cloud Sync, the engine essentially runs up in the cloud. So this is this new Azure AD Cloud Sync. And all I have is that a per domain, so every domain, I'm gonna have these very thin lightweight agents that actually connect outbound to a service bus and all of the work is really done here in the cloud. Now it can coexist in that I could still have my Azure AD Connect, but maybe now I have that disconnected scenario, maybe a merger and acquisition. Well, I could deploy the Azure AD Cloud Sync to synchronize that up. I can't use Azure AD Connect and Cloud Sync to replicate the same object. I can't do that. And so this new capability, again, it's a lot lightweight today. It doesn't do password write back. So there are some scenarios where I would still need Azure AD Connect. 
But go and look at this again on Tuesday. I'll post a deep dive because I think this is super cool. And I've actually got this all set up and running and I'll actually show it and I'll do some comparisons about it. But that is now GA. It's available to me if I was starting today with Azure AD and, and replicating and I didn't need the password right back today, I, I would probably look in at this new Azure AD Cloud Sync. So the Azure Security Center January 2021 GA updates has been released and also their kind of preview updates. If we actually go and look at these just super quickly, really there, there's a whole set of features around this. Um, we can see kind of the Azure Security Center benchmark is now the default policy initiative for Azure Security Center. So if you was to actually jump over, for example, to my Security Center, all of these compliance, all of these recommendations, and you can see here it's saying, hey, look, new is now driven off of this Azure Security benchmark. If you were to go and sort of poke around, if you go and look at Azure policy, for example, look at the definitions and look at the various initiatives we actually have, we can see kind of, hey, we have this enable monitoring in Azure Security Center, and that's actually what's assigned and is now powering all of these drivers behind sort of Azure Security Center. So we have that new um, benchmark is actually being leveraged. Also now the vulnerability assessment for on-premises and multi-cloud. So this is really where I have these ARC powered servers. It's now easier to push that kind of Azure Defender to give them that integrated protection. For my secure score, I can now actually see this for management groups. If I actually go and look, for example, at back on my security center, and go and look at my secure score. Remember, secure score is great as it kind of gives me this place to start and I can see, well, what's the greatest impact to my score? I can now turn on, you can see here in this right-hand corner, this group by management groups to kind of see by management group uh, really how I'm doing. There's also features around, hey, there's an API I can go and hook into dangling DNS, which is where, hey, I had an app service I had a DNS entry pointing to the app service and then I decommissioned it. Well, that DNS entry is still floating out there and maybe someone else goes and take that app service and kind of hijacks it. So that will now get flagged. Multi-cloud connectors, so we're getting security center. I can add cloud connectors to things like AWS and Google Cloud. So these are here to actually get, again, that consistent view across all my different clouds. And there's also now the ability to kind of exempt entire sets of recommendations. So, hey, Security Center is telling me, hey, you should do this. Well, I can actually go in and fire off an exemption. You can see here in this kind of top left. And I can exempt at different levels. I could say, well, look, exempt the entire subscription, management groups, selected resources. And then in future, those would kind of show as kind of these not applicable resources. There's the ability to request tenant wide visibility for global administrators, 35 preview recommendations to increase coverage of Azure Security Benchmark. You see all of those here. Um, export capabilities, new weekly snapshot of that secure score. So that's pretty cool. You can actually say, hey, I want a snapshot, and once a week, you kind of get that snapshot sent to you. So. Uh, a fairly big list of features um, all around Azure Security Center. Uh, the Backup Center now has additional capabilities. Remember, Backup Center really brings together this centralized view of my backup posture. So now things like SQL in Azure VMs, uh, SAP HANA in VMs, and Azure Files will now surface up in the Backup Center. Now, additionally, they've added some new policies all around, for example, if resources have certain tags or don't have tags, actually go and either make them align to an existing vault or actually go and create a new vault. So if we actually jump back over and we'll go and look in here, if I was to go and look at my Azure policy, 
And remember, we can go and look at our various definitions, and then we have the different categories. So if I change this category to just be backup, we can see we have these preview definitions here. And we can kind of see it's, hey, based on with a given tag to an existing, to a new, or without a given tag, um, deploy it for these resource-specific types. So we have these new built-in policies now to really help us drive those backup configurations. Uh, Azure Monitor for SAP solutions has various enhancements. So this is all about things like the, uh, the SAP application, the NetWeaver. And essentially what this is now going to let me do, in addition to some of the OS, the Linux, I could now think about having all of that telemetry from the SAP application, my NetWeaver, feeding into Azure Monitor. So now with the Azure native tooling, I can really get that complete end-to-end -end telemetry for my SAP running in Azure solution. So it's going to give me kind of that much better visibility. There's also a new Azure Monitor agent for a new batch of Linux distributions. Um, if we go and look at this, we can see exactly what they are. And as we can kind of see, hey, these all these latest distributions. And again, these are all built off of the new data collection rules. So once again, if we were to go and jump over, and if we look to Azure Monitor, the data collection rules, so we're going under settings, and I can see data collection rules, these really give me the capability to now focus on, well, what do I want to collect from? What do I want to collect? So what types of um, counters? What types of logs? And really, where do I want to send it? So these new uh, Azure Monitor agents are leveraging this to actually drive what are they collecting? And again, where we're sending it to. And then it's really about certifications. Um, so Microsoft Azure has achieved the PCI 3DS certification. You can actually go, if you're really bored on a Saturday night, you can go and look at the certification kind of trust portal. And under here, if you go to the PCI DSS category, you could download this new 3DS 1.0 package for 2021. And if we open it up, it's a set of fascinating documents that I could peruse and understand kind of everything that was done there. Now, the actual, there's two actually around certifications. The other is 172 Azure offerings have achieved the high trust certification. So back on that same portal, what I can actually do is this time, we'll go and look at the GRC assessment reports. Here we can see the Azure 2020 high trust certification letters. I can download that package. And then once again, if we kind of open that up and look in here, we can see the letter. Notice Databricks also um, has certification around this. But if we look, it tells us all of the regions that were actually included as part of this. And then what were the, so there's all the regions. And then I can actually see, well, what services? So things around, well, there's AI and machine learning categories, Azure Compute, sort of different types of or look, functions, Red Hat, some of them partial, some of them have exclusions. Then we have things like, hey, look, Windows Server 2012, Linux, et cetera, Azure Container Services, Kubernetes Container Instances. You can go through and see all of the various services that have kind of that certification. So again, if that's something that's important to your industry, obviously the PCI is around the payment card industry. Um, now we have the high trust. So if that does matter, uh, these will be important to be able to actually move my services into Azure. And that's it. So as always, I hope this was useful. If there's any questions, as always, comment below. Um, until next week, thanks for watching and uh, take care.